Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, Antonelli here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, Antonelli here. Today, we're looking at the best pitches of 2019 in the major leagues, okay? So we're going to go through every single pitch type, four-seam fastball, two-seam fastball, slash, sinker curveball, slider. We're going to get every single pitch except for knuckleballs, okay? Because the knuckleball kind of went extinct this year. There were very, very few knuckleballs thrown in the major leagues, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to look at both starters and relievers, okay? So we're going to pick one guy for a starter, one guy for a reliever for each pitch type. Now, how are we going to figure out or determine which is the best, which pitcher is the best? Well, we're going to look at opponent's batting average Again, so MLB Network is actually the one that put these numbers up. That's where I saw it. And so we're going to use those numbers and go through the list. You could use other numbers. This is probably one of the simpler ways to look at it, okay? Um, I'd be interested also, see if you guys can pause the video. I'll give you a few seconds before each pitch to see if you can figure out which pitcher actually had the lowest opponent batting average against, okay? So let's start out with the four-seam fastball, okay? Before I tell you who it is, I'll give you a second here to figure it out. The four-seam fastball has made this huge comeback, right? Four-seam fastball has become a deadly pitch in the major league, especially for guys that can throw hard with high spin rates. They throw up in the zone, blowing fastballs by guys. If you think about maybe 10 years ago back, especially when I was playing, it was kind of cool back then to move the ball around, throw sinkers, live down in the zone, right? Every pitching coach in the world would say, hey, down in the zone, down in the zone, you know, hit the corners. Now they're like, hey man, throw the fastball up in the zone, throw the four-seam fastball by people. Um, so it's interesting. So let's start with starter. Uh, this one's probably an easy one, okay? This is who came to mind when I first thought of it. But the best four-seam fastball last year as a starter, Garrett Cole, all right? So uh, let's look at the numbers. Opponents hit 166 against Garrett Cole's four-seam fastball. Basically impossible to hit, right? He throws hard as hell, throws it up in the zone. Now, he came from Pittsburgh, right? Pittsburgh wanted him to be a little bit more of like a like a two-seam, like sink the ball, you know, hit the corners, throw the ball down. Then he went to Houston, and they were like, no, let, let the four-seamer ride, man. Just blow it by, guys. It's worked out pretty well. Okay, bullpen four-seam fastball. This one's a little tougher. I didn't get this one. Who is it? It's Seth Lugo. 148 opponents batting average against on his four-seam fastball. Very interesting. Okay, now let's go over to the two-seam slash sinker. Okay, we're going to put these two pitches together. Starter, who do you think it's going to be? I didn't get this one either, guys. Julio Tehran. All right, 188 against them. Only gave up one home run all year on a two-seam slash sinker sinker. Now I had a chance to face Julio a good amount of times and uh, and I will say that that sinker or two seam whatever you want to call it is a pretty pretty tough pitch to hit. I do remember one specific at bat where he threw it to me over and over again and I just kept swinging over it and I typically had pretty good bat to ball skills. Um, I didn't swing and miss a whole lot in my career even during years where I really struggled but I just remember him throwing this thing, and I just kept swinging over it. You know, this happened to me once before. Bartolo Colon, the first time I faced Bartolo Colon, same thing. He was throwing these two-seam slash sinkers, and I just kept swinging over the top of it. It looks so good, boom, and you just miss it. Or you just smash it into the ground. Um, so really tough pitch to hit. Um, and for the bullpen, I didn't get this one either. Aaron Bummer, 195. Throws a lot of them, almost 70% two-seams uh, from him. Okay, now let's go to the cutter. The cutter, man, if you throw a good cutter, cutters are tough to hit. Cutter was really in vogue, especially again when I was playing. AAA was a huge cutter league. It was like guys would go to the big leagues and then they can't come back down and they had to figure out how to get up there. And they say, well, let me just, uh, you know, maybe I don't throw hard enough or whatever. Let me just try to just cut this ball a little bit. And it's a tough pitch. It's a weird pitch that comes in because you, you think you see it well. And then you go to hit it and square it up. And, you, and the ball moves just enough that you get it off the end of the bat. And you break your bat or you just, you know, you don't get it on the sweet spot. So tough pitch. Uh, Anibal Sanchez, 188 off the cutter. 
as a starter. Okay, so I mean he's had he had a really really good year. Basically um, revived his career with the cutter. Um, very interesting. Okay, bullpen. Give you a second here. I didn't get this one either. Alex Colomay, 174 on the cutter. All right, and he can throw it. He throws it in. He throws it out. He moves it around really, really well. And just watching some video on him, the thing looked like a frisbee. It like come in like this, and it just it was crazy how much movement it had. It almost it almost looked like a slider, but it didn't have a whole lot of depth. It just cut right across the screen like a lot. Really tough pitch. Obviously, Mariano Rivera, one of the greatest cutters of all time. He threw Rivera threw it hard as hell, right? He threw like 95, and it would cut over. And you know it's coming, and you still can't hit it. It's crazy. Speaking of another pitch. That's uh, basically unhittable. At least for me it was. Splitter. Splitter's my least favorite pitch. If a guy had a splitter, and usually, in my experience, I usually face uh, splitters. Guys that threw splitters were usually bullpen guys, but there have been some starters. Two guys that come to mind, really, when I think of splitters are Kurt Schilling and Roger Clemens. They both threw splitters at like 90 miles an hour. They were unhittable. You could literally tell a guy, here comes a splitter, and you can't hit it. It's very weird. Splitter almost... It almost like looks like a knuckleball kind of. It like tumbles in, but it comes in so hard. It looks weird. It just, no matter what, like even if I thought he was throwing it, I just would always swing over the top of it. Really, really hard to hit. My defense against a guy with a splitter is I said, okay, I'm going to swing at a fastball early. Like I'm not getting the two strikes on this guy because I got no chance on a splitter. So first good fastball I see, I've got to be aggressive. It doesn't even have to be a perfect fastball. Just something for me to hit and put in play and I'll do it. So uh, starter. Chirinos, 133. Batting average against off the splitter. Crazy, 133. Basically impossible to hit. Bullpen, Kirby Yates with the Padres, 153. And uh, he threw over 400 splitters this year and didn't allow a home run on him, which isn't really surprising because of, well, I mean, if you had a bad one, I guess you could give some homers. But if you've got a good one and it's down in the zone, it's like, it's hard. You can't hit that thing out of the park. Let's go to slider. Here's a here's an interesting one right here for a slider. I wasn't even close to this one. Sonny Gray. Talk about a comeback year for Sonny, right? Uh, 117 batting average against. Crazy number. Really, really good. And uh, for bullpen, Amir Garrett. 121. So there's some low, low numbers on, on sliders right there. Really... Uh, for me personally, again, I'd rather face a curveball than a slider. Slider, especially a good slider, will start, it'll come in hard and look like a fastball, boom, and then it just will dive away from you. Really, really hard pitch to hit. Change up, starter. Now, this guy's name popped into my mind. I didn't know if he was going to be number one, but it popped in because his changeup is, he's known for his changeup, and it's just a filthy changeup. Luis Castillo, 128 batting average against. And when I watch this guy, a couple things stand out about his changeup. One, the thing move it runs and sinks so much. He throws it pretty hard, but he would command it. I'd watch over and over again where the catcher would set up on the black and it's just boom, 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 just pounding it right there. Amazing command of it. And then when he wanted you to chase it, he could just move it and just run it off the plate to a left-handed hitter. Basically unhittable. Um, and then for the bullpen, Tommy Canley. 136, and he throws it hard as hell. He calls it a changeup. It's like 90 plus miles an hour for most people. That's like a hard fastball, though. Again, in today's game, I guess it's not. But he throw his his changeup was anywhere from 90 to 94. Crazy, hard as hell, and just this late like down, downward life. Really, really good pitch. And the curveball. Last pitch we're gonna do is the curveball. Um, Herman Marquez. 130, all right? And it's interesting because here's a guy with the Rockies. Typically, you don't see, uh, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to spin the ball. It's hard to throw breaking balls in Colorado. And, uh, and his numbers actually, so it's 130, but on the road, it was even better. I think it was like 114 on the road. Um, and it was higher at home, obviously, because it's tougher to throw it in Colorado. And then uh, Brandon Workman. With the Red Sox, 132 batting average against on the curveball. And he's kind of got that like 12-6 hammer, just like old school breaking ball. All right, so there it is. Um, 
let me know which ones surprised you guys and which ones you got. I think the ones that I kind of got, Garrett Cole came to mind real quick. Um, Tehran didn't, but, you know, I knew that he had a really good one. Uh, let's see who else. Kirby Yates, I mean, he's he's got a filthy splitter. Luis Castillo was one, again, that came to mind pretty quick. I think those were the guys that kind of popped into my head. Uh, but the other guys didn't get it. But there it is. Let me know if... Um, I know these are all based on, on batting average against. But let me know about some other guys. Maybe that you think... Maybe they didn't lead in this category, but were really, really good in other ones and guys that you think might even have better pitches than some of the guys that were listed down here by MLB Network. So that's all we got. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Comment in the section below. Subscribe to the channel. Share with all your friends. All that good stuff. And we'll talk to you later.